to the consent agenda, we're substituting item 5KK resolution um, grant application to the Mississippi Department of Marine Resources for capital project 1027 Sherman Kane and Fishing Dock. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the amended agenda? I move it. It's amended. Motion by Mr. Lawrence. Is there a second? Second by Ms. Newman. Any discussion? All in favor? 4 0 vote carry. Thank you all for being here today. That brings us to the mayor's report. Mr. Mayor, you ready? Now we got it. Okay, we're good. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I do want, want to welcome everyone to, to this meeting. And, and uh, uh, I don't have a whole lot, but we're going to have a tree, tree committee report in just a moment. But uh, I see one of my favorite people sitting there reading a book, Pinky Lewis, and uh, everything that you do and you approve comes through her hands. Now, uh, today is not your official last day. So we. I ask her to stay on until at least the 20 seconds. So it's, it's good to see you here. It's good to have you, uh, since the 80s, I know she's been uh, uh, doing her thing and our thing. So I want to thank you from my heart and, and the people who are in this room that uh, I've, you know, it's going to be a, a sad day to uh, not be able to call your extension and say, and she'll say, what do you need? When she's done it. So I uh, love you, Pinky, and appreciate everything you've done. So. And uh, I think uh, Mike's going to give us a little update a little bit later on, but well, maybe on a, a, a subject that uh, is near and dear to everyone, that's the Pop Ferry Bridge, and we're going to have some scheduling uh, yeah. uh, maintenance happening next week to make sure at least we can use the rest of the life of this bridge. For the record, just for the record, you will recall that in July of 2020, the bridge was impacted by a barge carrying, push a, a, a tug pulling a bunch of barges. After the after the accident, the area was investigated. Uh, the bridge was put back together again. It's, it operated normally for a while, but over time, the mean time between failures has been decreasing. The, the number of failures, it gets more and more common. So we just had Hoovall and Associates, that's a, that's a, a bridge company out of uh, Louisiana, over that uh, did another inspection of the bridge. And one day next week, we will have a scheduled maintenance. I don't know which day yet. We're waiting, waiting to coordinate that with everybody. But it'll be announced at least 48 hours in, in advance. But the bridge will be closed for about six hours while they adjust uh, the mechanisms under the bridge. We think that'll solve the problem for now. We just wanted to get that out because I, I know that's going to affect the, some the 20,000 cars a day that go over that bridge. Okay, well now we can really start because Felix just came in the room. So, Felix, I do want to congratulate everybody. That's free uh, council contest, and and that was uh, you know decided this week. So, congratulations to you, and congratulations to everybody who participated in this this process. You know, uh, the winners and the runner-ups, and and that's part of this ball game. And uh, you know, it's like boxing. You never know till you get in and do those three minutes what it's about. So, I'm appreciative of everybody who took place. You know, it, it, in uh, you know the right that we have to run and, and, and represent, uh, you, know, the, you know, the people in our ward, the people in our city. It's a uh, it's truly a great thing that we have in this country. So congratulations to everyone, and we're appreciative of the effort. You know, we lose a draw of what what took place. Uh, at this time, I think we've got a report from the tree committee. Thank you, Tracy. If you if you would just state your name so the clerk can get it for the minutes. Thank you, ma'am.
think it's, it, you can present it, and you have to run all, all of the details, whatever you're most comfortable with doing. We're okay. I have one question before you get started. What happened to the green shirt? <laughs> green shirt. That's green. That green Are we in the flowers now? <laughs> okay, just check it. Okay, so mitigation tracking. So I, as I understand it, the, the mitigation bank um, language is on the agenda today as well, which is super great. Um, so the tree committee has tracked the need for mitigation or replanting of trees for the last three to three and a half years um, because when we first were established, whenever that was, four years ago or so, we recognized that this was the main concern of the public is that trees were being replanted, replanted in relation to the ones that were being approved for removal. And we realized we really didn't have enough information on that. And so we began tracking this. And so what we've handed out today, what I've handed out today is basically a spreadsheet um, that we've used to track it. And it's pretty complex, and I apologize that it is in point one font, but <laughs> I will uh, send you all a digital copy. Um, so I'm just going to summarize this. Um, so there on the left, there are each of the projects that require mitigation. And mitigation by the land development ordinance is required at a rate of three trees to be replanted per every protected tree that is approved for removal. Um, and the protected species are um, the southern magnolia, bald cypress, and actually right now as the LDO stands, all of the oak trees <coughs> of, and the, of a certain size. And then there are special uh, special needs permits in relation to, like if trees are in a big cluster or whatever, but the LDO stipulates all of that. <clears throat> so anyway, in general, it's a three to one requirement. Um, so we've listed on the left column the, the projects that we've been tracking. The next column speaks to the number of trees that were approved for removal. The next tree, or the next column is the number that were actually removed. The next column is the multiplier. Usually it's a three to one ratio. And the next column is the number of trees, the actual number of trees then required for planting, required to be replanted. So if you skip down, well, I guess we'll, I'll just go over one more column. The next column, um, because each of these uh, gets uh, a letter of recommendation, from the tree committee based on the city arborist contacts us, let us, lets us know this project is requesting a lot of trees to be removed. So we go ahead and um, meet with him on the site, assess the site, and we offer our recommendations and submit them to the mayor and, and others. <laughs> and so that, that column just lets you know whether our um, recommendations were accepted, uh, rejected, or modified. And it's a good balance. I mean, quite often our uh, recommendations are accepted. Um, but so if you just go down to page three, the summary um, lets us know that 802 trees were permitted for removal in this period, uh, actually from the beginning of the, tree, the existence of the tree committee. Um, 780 were actually removed and 2,032 are required to be replanted. And currently, I mean, we have a few that we have noted um, these were replanted. But we have no information on where they were replanted, what was actually planted, or, um, or when it was replanted. Um, and we have, and so we've been working in cooperation with um, basically, well, the Director of City uh, Community Development and, and the City Arborist to kind of try and come up with a, a process that's going to work and is going to um, hold up, you know, everybody's going to be accountable. Um, not only the city, but the developers are going to be accountable for the, the number of trees that they're required to, to put in the ground. And that we'll, be able to, we'll actually be able to track them. So anyway, um, 
in the blue are all of um, the city arborist notes on the current status of these. And, and we have several questions, and we'll meet with them again, and we'll get some of those questions answered. But there are just a lot of concerns. And, um, and, and as you see, the, the, the three columns on the far right is where we were asking for um, when the replanting mitigation was actually completed, um, what, which species were planted, and um, the date of the, either the Certificate of Occupancy or the CDC, which I don't ever remember what that stands for. But basically it's a commercial Certificate of Occupancy. Um, but, and we, and we don't get that information. And so there's just a, there's just a gap. And so this just presents to you, it is what it is. This is what, where we're at so far. This is what we've got. The, the mitigation bank language that's going to be presented later, we've read it. We're mostly in agreement to much of it. We, we do have a few comments that we'll make that we, we have on that when that's presented. But, um, and so we're moving forward in a, in, a, in a good direction, I feel like. Um, but nevertheless, this is the record. It is what it is. There's a lot of trees that still need to go in the ground. And any questions? I don't have a question, but I do have a, have a comment. I think it's an excellent, excellent tracking document. And uh, this has been a concern, really, this mitigation issue since the inception or the reactivation, if you will, of the tree committee. And it's, uh, it's easy to say you're going to mitigate and provide trees. The difficult part is where you're going to put them because you have the power company trimming trees. You, you can't put them in all recreation facilities. You don't know when you'll need more space at those facilities. So um, I'm hoping that the language that uh, is being proposed or will be proposed in the, in the future with the input from the tree committee will help us come up with a, a better means of at least uh, having the resources to acquire those mitigated trees mm -hmm. and getting them in the ground and having them irrigated and, and checking, particularly if they're protected trees like live oaks, that they are cared for appropriately. So uh, I, think, uh, well, I'm, I don't know if there's going to be an overview prevent, presented today for that, Peter. Did you? Do you know? I don't know that we need to. I know it's it's going to be a revision to the ordinance, and there'll be a first and second reading. But if you want to touch on it now, you yeah. Just just I knew when the, we've had this draft of the mitigation bank sitting around working on it here and there, but knowing that y'all were coming, we wanted to <laughs> get that into your hands before the meeting so we could start. Uh, hopefully, by the next time we have a tree committee report, we'll already have that mitigation bank in place and uh but we still need to have a meeting with y'all and with eric nolan and um get it in the final form but i think it's it's pretty close it's pretty uh interesting it was really hard to find i mean not many other cities have this we had to we've we've found something similar in georgia uh outside of atlanta but it's it's not a real uh we kind of had to invent the wheel on a lot of it so uh, but but I'm I'm glad we're able to discuss it. Yeah. Get this going because yeah. it's been a while. To add to what you said, uh, uh, Dr. Tisdale, you know the the when is also a part. Man. When do you do these things for the, and the things that you mentioned is uh, the ongoing success of what you replant and what you you know mitigate. But the timing when you can begin the process. We you know we like to get success on 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 the three to one, all three of what we plant, but the, I think uh, with Walker, working with Eric and, and, and everyone, that's a big part of this process too, is when do you do this, in, in, in addition to what, where, and... and that's an excellent point. Yeah. Um, so by the, by the land development ordinance, um, developers, builders are supposed to replant within six months of that date of completion, and, and that's really what's not happening. Yeah, in the time um, but, of year, the time that of the year. That, yeah. Yeah. that six months gives them that time to be able to plant within a season that it makes sense. I mean, you don't want to plant in the middle of July in right. mm -hmm. Biloxi, you know, mm -hmm. because it's going to scorch it. Um, to, to speak to Peter, I'm, I'm really, really glad that you mentioned that you're planning to bring the tree committee back because that was going to be one of our
questions. Is are are you going to bring us? We'd like to be back. We'd like to be in the conversation as as that language is refined. Um, and I will just add, and we had suggested some overall simplified tree protection language. And so the language that you present or that you crafted um, includes word like words like specimen tree. It includes. Um, calculations for tree canopy. And we actually proposed that a lot of that language or in process actually comes out of the land development ordinance. And so it's, we definitely welcome the opportunity to be in conversation about that. Yeah, we, we just need a formula that we can be consistent, that the developer yes. will know this is what he's got to do or this much he's going to have to pay. And if we have a fund that we, I mean, I think we would go out and use the fund to to purchase bigger and more substantial trees and put them in areas where they're going to make a much bigger impact and be and, and have that greater chance of success mm -hmm. rather than putting a bunch of saplings around town, something like that. Right. And, and I, 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 I hesitate to say anything, uh, but I obviously I'm going to say something. <laughs> um, so the science actually shows that you want to plant two to three inch caliper trees, which is not very big. And that those trees will far surpass the, 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 the growth rate in, in two to four years than if you plant a six inch live oak. And so, and so it's, just, it's just good to have everybody in the conversation so that we've got, you know, and, and I'm not, I didn't create the science, so. Um, it's not not just me, but um, so it's good to have several people in the conversation so that we make sure that we're developing this language in, in truly the best way for the to, pre to preserve the tree canopy in Biloxi. And I think we're all in agreement that that's our goal. Okay. Good. Cool. Thank you, Ms. Wyman. Anything else uh, from the administration or we can move on? Anything else under the mayor's yeah, report? Right. That concludes my report. Right. Okay. Thank may, you, I, may I present the Majestic Tree Program, sure. which, and I can, I can, yeah. I'll take much less time on this, maybe. <laughs> so um, I guess maybe for right now, um, and I can do this differently if you wish for me to, but for right now, I can just um, let you know that the Majestic Pre, uh, Tree Program has been drafted, and, um, and we have gone over it with the Director of Community Development and the City Arborist, and we wanted to present it to City Council to launch it. Launch it. Um, and I've got it drafted here, or we have it drafted here. And Geneva Doomer, when she was on board with the Tree Committee, she was largely, uh, her, her huge contribution was bringing all this together. And so it's drafted in one page what people do to designate their tree as a, as a city of Biloxi majestic tree. Um, one of the things we want to see is that any tree of a certain size um, can be a majestic tree. It doesn't just have to be a live oak. Um, but there's a step-by-step -step process, and the first step is qualifying your tree through the society. Does, I don't speak French, so we're just going to call it the Society of Trees right now. Um, the link is on this document, and once that's done, then the participant, the property owner, can um, apply through another application, which is also included here, um, to have it designated as a City of Biloxi um, tree. And then we'll have a, and that'll be pretty easy for us to then map where all these designated these um, um, designated trees are. And the big thing about having a tree designated is that it, it, it adds a, another, or we hope that it adds another, our proposal is that it adds another layer of protection to that tree. It would require an addition, a, a more rigorous um, removal process or trimming process should that um, ever need to occur. So I'm going to give this to each of you. Um, you haven't had time to look it over yet, so maybe over the next month, um, take some time to look at it and, um, you know, we'll go from there. Does that sound good? Sounds great.
Uh, were you done, Tracy, or did, was there more? That concludes my very lengthy uh, presentation. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, at this time, we'll move to uh, council reports. I'm going to start over here on my right, Mr. Glavin in Ward 6. All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to thank uh, or congratulate uh, uh, the councilmen that won their elections. I know uh, y'all were waiting for that day. So uh, Felix, Doc, congratulations. And of course, the godfather pulled out a squeaker. Uh, him and Keith kind of ran a neck and neck race. And you know it was close and exciting to see that. So um, congratulations, Keith, for a hard fight. I know you fought uh, for a long time. And, and hats go out off to you for, for campaigning that long. Uh, and Mayor, uh, I know he's, congratulations to you. I stopped by your victory party, and man, if you would have had an opponent, you, 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 had a, you can't even fill the lodge with, with so many people down there, but um, that, that was good to see the energy and the enthusiasm to support you for another four years. Um, okay, getting uh, to some Ward 6 business. Uh, the tennis courts at the Sportsplex, uh, I know it was over, I think it was over a year ago, uh, we talked about some lighting out there, and uh, there's still complaints, uh, not, not necessarily by the operator of the tennis court, but there's a lot of uh, people in my ward and other wards that are playing out there, and they're saying the lighting is, is not very good. And I, did we not have some kind of grant lined up at one time, and it was like a third, a third, and, and maybe the grant covered a third, or am I, it was that another, was that another project that that was covering? Remember, but I think it was like exorbitant. It was a hundred thousand dollars to put the LED lights and, and things of that nature. I do know we've been having to position them every time a hard wind comes. Yeah. Is that the issue, or is it just the lighting itself? It's. It, I mean, what I'm hearing from the folks out there, they, they, it's almost not even playable with the existing lights because of the glare, and uh, we need some better lighting out there. That, that a tennis court that deserves, you know, one of the best cities and. In the world out here in Biloxi, Mississippi, our, our Sportsplex tennis court, uh, you know, ought to have at least appropriate lighting out there. So if that's something we can continue to look at, if there are grants and if there, if the school and us and, and there's another source uh, to, to kind of divide up that financial burden, you know. Okay. Well, thank you, Director. I appreciate that. Um, Drainage plan on Brody, I know I, I sent an email and I just want to get it on record today. There, there's, there's always new development and what comes with new development sometime are complications with drainage. Uh, we've had, I'm not going to name the other ones, uh, but we've had some new development in the past that created drainage problems for the adjacent established neighborhoods. And uh, we have a development out on Brody Road next to uh, Live Oak by the Bay. And uh, it's exciting to see that development. It looks like it's going to be fantastic. But um, we do need to make sure that that drainage does not intrude into the neighborhood next door if there's runoff. And it creates a burden for the existing neighbors. That's, that's only fair. So I hope that's going to be checked out. It looks like it's progressing rapidly. I hope that's going to be checked out and, and that we ensure there's no drainage complications for the neighbors next to that new development. Yeah, the report that we had was that they were hauling fill dirt in there. That requires a permit, a fill, debt, a fill permit. We sent an inspector out yesterday, I know, to look to be sure that there's nobody, that they're just clearing. That's what they were, we were told, that they're just clearing, not hauling fill. But right, if they're so hauling fill, we'll, we'll have to stop, stop it. All right, so the, your comment was they're hauling fill dirt, but they're telling you that they're clearing. So which one but, is it? Well, no, the, the no, the, uh, Developer says they're just clearing. Okay. So you, no you reported dirt. to us via repeated from from a resident next door that they were hauling fill dirt in. We haven't seen that yet. I mean, any, any evidence that they're hauling fill dirt and they're only just clearing? But okay. if they are, if we catch them pulling hauling fill dirt in there, we'll cite them. Okay. I mean, it, I mean, of course they're going to have to bring some dirt in there to to land to mm -hmm. to make the. To topography, you know, correct. We understand that, but there should be a well thought out drainage plan that it doesn't run off and try to, you know, the, it, they want their systems to catch whatever runoff that they make, you know, create an additional burden. All of that is done when it goes to BRC, but right now all they're doing is clearing. Yes, sir. 
uh, and, and are greatly appreciated. And I'm, again, this is not, this is constructive criticism. We've went through this process with DRC and other developments and somehow it, it still got through where it created a burden with some drainage issues, you know. Um, so I hope we look at that thoroughly to get it right from the get-go. We're not trying to correct something on the back end. Um, Water's view update. I, I know we had the Marsh Master in there. Is is there an update what they ex exactly they hauled out of there? Or what what exactly they did? Uh, or are we still waiting for a, a report from that? Or is that all complete? Well, we've done what we could with that machinery. Okay. Now we're just kind of waiting to see does the drainage work and like it's supposed to. Okay. And if not, then we'll we've got another area that we're going to have to do. Okay. All right. We'll see. All right, so, and then I would cross me over to um, the peninsula. There's new houses that are springing up along the peninsula. We, I've reported that at this council uh, meetings before. Uh, one particular resident said he was excited to see the dredging plan for that area. One of the reasons that he bought his house, he wants to commence on doing a pier, but he doesn't want to do it if uh, if that project is not going to happen or, you know, he just wants to know what the expectations with that project is. My response was, you know, we're assessing the dredging. I know that area was uh, put on a map for dredging uh, projects. It may not be the entire uh, canal that goes in there because of vegetation that they may have found. And, and we're working on mitigation for that as well. So, um, which gives me a chance to, to tell the full council, because I know more than you probably are involved in this, um, submerged aquatic vegetation, SAVs. We have an SAV problem. <laughs> I didn't know we had an SAV problem until MDMR told us we had an SAV problem. So basically, basically all of our dredge projects are on hold right now because we, we have to have some sort of a mitigation plan where we're gonna plant other things elsewhere in order to disturb, disturb the submerged aquatic vegetation. So that's where we are with the, the core and with the EMR right now. They, they put a hold on all our dredging projects. And, 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 and oh, by the way, in one of the agenda items that on, on today's agenda is a request for Tidelands money for some additional dredging money. So we'll, we're still we're still asking for help. And DMR has has given us dredging money in the past, but they're just not approving any of our dredging projects right now. Okay, so, so I that, can't help the guy out. I don't know if that. that but, was... So yeah, so I guess he's not going to have a, a boat dock anytime soon. Okay, so whatever we can do to speed up the mitigation plan or or yeah. whose hands is that in? Seymour Engineering is is doing the research for us, and we just don't have an, an approved response as yeah. to how to how to mitigate this grass that's been there since you know forever can i respectfully uh, request at some point in the next couple of meetings that seymour engineering come give us a specific sure. update and just let us know what the what the plan is or what the concept is i'll even ask them to bring some sav to show you what an sav looks like because i haven't seen an sav either so I don't, I don't know what kind of grass it is, whatever it is. Okay. Is the at, at my last council meeting, uh, Seymour Engineering was there and we discussed that because we had the SAV problem around the, uh, the Bo Shin um, development. And what they said, the mitigation plan, there really is no mitigation plan. You just have to keep checking it because this, this type of SAV that's here appears and disappears. And so we have to continue to check the area and find it the appropriate, the appropriate time to, mm -hmm. to dredge it when the SAVs are no longer present. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what they shared with us at the mm -hmm. council meeting. Yeah, Th thank you, council member. If if we can get them on the record at one of our council meetings of of that type of uh, dialogue and conversation, that'd be great. So if it disappears, mm -hmm. let's get let's be ready. Mm -hmm. If it disappears tomorrow, let's get in there and do mm -hmm. some dredging. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the speed tables. I know this has been another topic. Uh, I've noticed that uh, over in the. Uh, Brentwood Ellington area that we put a couple of speed table types of things. Is that it? What we're doing over there? It's a couple. The only, of the only um, speed, as you know, we in Taylor Oaks we put a speed table when it was requested, um, and we also put speed bumps in on Ellington and right. Pops Ferry Landing. I have no other requests at this time. 
No, that's good. I just wanted to make sure those speed bumps were, or whatever we call them, or that's it. There's not another. Not, no plan to put a table in there. Uh, we, we're, we're, I think we're out of the table business for now. <laughs> okay. I will tell you, and the HOA will probably request me to attend. I may invite you to that meeting, but they're, they're still, uh, I guess, struggling with what we did in Taylor Oaks. I know we did what they asked for. It's just the edges are still giving some of the the, the immediate uh, property owner a little bit of grief. He says he can't park because of the slope or what have you. Uh, I know we attempted to get a company to uh, to file those edges down to no avail because was, he, he felt it would make it worse than it, that it would improve it. But perhaps there is a uh, modification that doesn't cost a lot of money that we can come up with at some point. Uh, for those edges, and I, what I told them, we'd continue to ponder it a little bit and see if we can come up with something. But I just wanted to make you aware of that. Um, let's see. Uh, and then another drainage uh, issue. This is at the corner of Kimbro. There was a drainage system that uh, was probably uh, flawed. Uh, I know we uh, Public Works is aware of it. Uh, the property owner claims that she was told that we were going to correct it, and I, I don't know if that's true. Can you maybe get with Public Works and give me an update when you can on what's going on with that uh, Kimbro drainage issue? They're saying now that that corner lot is flooding, that it never really flooded before, and they think that maybe that drainage system is, has uh, crushed or, or not draining properly, and it's creating some backup uh, for that piece of property. The name of the corner is at the corner of Kimbro. Kimbro, Kimbro yes, sir. Kimbro and Cedar Lake. Mm -hmm. And that concludes my report. Thank you. The answer I would give is the is the same answer I would give when if you would call me at work, and that is, I'll turn in a service request to investigate and recommend a solution. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Glab. Mr. Deming, Ward Four. I know we have, we've discussed doing a ride along in the ward, and I didn't know if, if I could whittle down some dates. If you have any free time, I know, I know you'll be out of town until, until this weekend. Because next weekend would be good, you know? But next, next week, week, excuse me. Monday or, Monday or Tuesday, if you're available this week, I would love to get you over there to, to look at some things we have going on. Okay. Monday. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Deming, Ms. Newman, and Ward 3. Yes, um, if you recall, when you proposed the homeless shelter in our neighborhood, I mentioned that I was concerned because of the children and elderly who lived in the neighborhood. So, because um, also they're already experiencing homeless issues out there. Well, now my fear has been realized because in the neighborhoods over there, there is a naked homeless man that is terrorizing our neighborhoods. So we've got to do something about this. And I've gotten multiple calls about it from different people. So it's definitely going on. And, and you know, I fear for the kids and what they're going through. So please, no. somebody, and I don't see the chief in the room, but I'll get in touch with him. I just wanted to make you aware there's a naked homeless man on the run. <laughs> N naked or naked? Huh? Uh, Did you say naked or naked? What's the Whichever you prefer. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, don't make me don't make me bang this gavel again. Mostly around Terra Lane is <laughs> where he's been seen. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Newman. Uh, Mr. Gines in Ward Two. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Tisdale. Uh, I missed a little earlier, so I want to thank you again and uh, congratulate Miss Pinky. So I just wanted to acknowledge that uh, all that hard work and pays off. So thank you again. Uh, I also want to thank our officers. Um, I've received a lot of calls from uh, citizens in East Biloxi, Ward 1 and Ward 2. Uh, thank our police officers and thank our mayor for their professionalism. So I just want to make sure that that was acknowledged. A lot of them know what that was about. Uh, I want to go ahead and make an announcement. June, June 19th, uh, we're, we'll be celebrating Juneteenth. If weather permit at Henry Beck Park and the festivities start about one o'clock. Um, to the administration, uh, Mike Leonard, um, Mayor, I want to ask about Pelican Waste. Um, 
have been making a lot of calls lately, and I think we discussed that earlier. Um, for whatever reason, they're missing um, a lot of the pickups in the community. Um, in some cases, some of my residents are saying that, you know, they're just driving by. I don't know if they have enough workers or anything else, but could you look into it and just kind of find out yeah. what's, what's the hold up? Right, well, I certainly will. And I don't, I mean, I wouldn't expect anything, any real problems, because they've addressed some problems as far as their staffing, what they did. So I'll look into that. I know we, Billy Ray, I don't know if Billy Ray's in the, in the room, but we had waste management issues, especially where on, in or around construction zones. But I think Alan from the Utility Authority has been discussing that with Billy Ray, but I, I haven't, uh, but I'll make them aware of, of the problems, which streets, uh, and I'll connect with you afterwards to, to see which streets we're talking about that, that seem to be right. missed. But I'll, I'll definitely look into that for that. Okay, and the you know, and that's the construction zone is understandable. Yeah. But it was some of the residents, and uh, Bill Ray had to kind of uh, take care of me right. because they were uh, trash been sitting out two and three weeks in there front of home. The biggest problem we've seen in my neighborhood, you know, in front of vacant lots versus in front of people, you know, that were out, that yeah. they shouldn't, they, you know, they're supposed to, you know, pick up where there are trash cans or where there are accounts. And, and that may be, we'll make sure that that's not the, the issue, but we'll, we'll certainly look in there. I don't expect them, they should be responding to us. And, and as soon as we'll, we'll get yeah. to them and, and yeah, and I just had to make a note of it because um, I took pictures of them in front of homes and they... Oh, they were supposed them. to be picked up, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah so that, um, and I would like to... Um, uh, Walt, is Walt in the room? Okay. Uh, is uh, Can't Be Beat, beat Fencing, are they back on, on, on duty? We, we still have a couple of fences that are not quite wrapped up. Yes, sir, they're back. They've been kind of hit and miss, but they are back. Um, they're here two, three days. They go to another job and come back, but they are here and they're working today. So I, asked, I talked to my staff this morning. I said, let's go down all of our service requests versus where uh, what we got remaining and make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, thank you. And I would like to get with you and go look at one project that, you know, had some questions. Yes, sir. Right thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Guys. Mr. Lawrence in Ward 1. You have quite a bit today. First, I'd like to graduate, uh, congratulate Mississippi State. You know, making a World College Series, beating Notre Dame yesterday, 11 to seven. That's why I had my maroon shirt for that one. That's a good thing to represent the state of Mississippi. We had a lot of things went on in uh, Ward One. We had a book signing down at the Seafood Museum. Billy Ramming. Raymond cooked some of the best jambalaya you ever want to eat. So if he's going to start selling, he opened up his own grocery store. He's going to have his cafe. Awesome job, Billy. Like that. <laughs> and then we had a book sign on the Hot Avenue, so we steady adding to the strip. Now it's time, uh, Fofo, to light the city up. You've been talking about it long enough. We need to get with the power company. We have to do it. You've got to put the lights up and down the, seat, the street all over the area. And you run your bricks as far as you can run them. Because that's, that's helping. So it's time. You want to push this downtown? Well, it's right. working right now. So don't, don't stop now. Let's get it done. Light it up. Let's get it moving. A uh, couple things. Uh, we have a problem with the sign ordinance. We had a lady paint a fence 18 different colors. I don't know what it was. Kind of find out there was no law or ordinance that said you can't do that. So we need to get Jerry Creel to put something together and have certain colors, black, white, gray, whatever it is, enlisted for these colors and write up another ordinance stating that if they want to paint their fence like that, paint inside the fence where they look at it, not where everybody in the city has to look at it. So it's something we need to address because it's not a good thing, you know, so that way we want to get in trouble with anybody. One of the biggest events we had today, uh, this weekend was the Billfish Tournament and 101 boats, these are million dollar boats. And the only complaint we ever had was that there wasn't enough trash cans or, go, or carts. Okay, when you got that many people with that much money coming to town, by God, we need to make sure they're happy and take care of them. And you want them to come back next year. They set a record with the short fist, 309.9 pounds, state record. It's only worth 250,000. That's chump change, you know. Then the billfish with nine, 783 pounds. Unbelievable size of these fish. A ton of crowd come down there, a lot of people. 
But the people that come from all over the states, the United States, the fish state thing, this is getting to be one of their best stops. So we need to make sure they keep coming back. That's a huge thing for the city of Biloxi. Danny Vitala, Pat Luz, couldn't keep enough fuel. They sold thousands and thousands of gallons of fuel. Can them both just take some of them 10, 12,000 gallons of, you know, big, and it's just a ton of money coming back to the city. I mean, that's a huge event, it's like cruising, except it's just uh, one weekend, really. But it's a big thing for the city. And uh, <clears throat> Mike, uh, we're getting ready to do the chairman of the insurance committee. I need an update on insurance for the health insurance. Health insurance in particular? Right, because we're getting ready to start uh, doing our meetings. Yep. So I need to have the latest update you have to see where we're at, how we up, down, whatever it is. That's for the insurance committee on the health insurance. And another thing we had talked about before is about the, the stimulus check, or whatever you want to call it, for the employee. Maybe it's been here since uh, June, January of 2019. Get them at $1,200, $1,500. They've been through a lot to stay with the city. It's a tough time. So it's something that we need to look at to take care of a lot of employees that could have left, whatever, but I mean, they stayed. I know it's hard to get people raised, but a one time thing, you might be talking about a million dollars, one shot. Just something for y'all to look at money-wise. You know, I know we have to have enough money to pay our bills and stuff like that, but sometimes you gotta take care of the people that make the sun and run. And that's the people that work in it. It's like both of us says half of them work. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. We still have to take care, we have to look at something like that. I, ge I generate each quarter a report that I give you that shows where we are at that point in the year on health insurance. The, the quarter ends here at the end of June. I'll be, I'll be generating that report the last, for the last meeting in June. We are underwater right now. We are definitely way above budget on um, medical insurance for the year. All right. Anything you do like that would just help us, you know. <clears throat> I wonder, too, I had a couple calls over the week on the construction on Benaki. The stuff was left wide open with the rain. I mean, these kids were swimming in these holes and all the time. That's not, it looked like to me they have to jump that off or stop that. I called Bill Ray and he said he was going to find out who was supposed to be taking care of that. But what, the, the Division Street? Yeah, yeah. And what, what I would have recommended, Councilman, is that you call the police when you see something like that. We were talking about somebody had to go down there and run those kids off that were swimming, right. swimming in the bayou. But if it, was, if it was blocked off, they wouldn't be there. I mean, so you gotta, maybe, right, the police go run off the kill, mm -hmm. but the construction people should make sure that's covered or taken care of. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't leave it wide open. So that's there, this is just as much as fault as anybody else. Mm -hmm. Kids, 10 years old, they're gonna jump in anything, got water in it, and no big deal. But so look there, look at the construction guy. They're getting paid to make sure this stuff is done right, mm -hmm. and by God, they need to protect those holes around there, because when it rains so much, I think pretty deep, yeah. So anyway, that's something on them. So I don't know who runs it, that they have to talk to you. Somebody needs to talk to that construction company and say, no, this is what you need to do at the foot of Benaki. You know, that was a lot of water. That was on a weekend? Weekend, Saturday, it was Saturday morning, I got the phone call. Now you're gonna get them Saturdays, you know. I'm not sure if we got anything else. Wait, we ain't finished yet. Contractor. Two things. Uh, I asked Jerry Creel, I know they've been cutting down, the city's been going around cutting down crepe metal trees, but just can't figure out why. Just like in some of the meetings and stuff like that, I, I don't understand it. I talked to Jerry earlier, he said he didn't know they were doing that. Crepe metals? On the crepe metals on Porter Avenue, you know? Where, where at on Porter Avenue? Wait, on the medium on Porter. Jerry, about crepe metals? So I mean, they dropped two or three crepe metal trees all over the place. I just need to find out why. Plan to cut. If somebody had a complaint, then that's fine. They need a complaint, need to at least let the council in that ward know if there was a complaint. Where, I mean, we don't know. We don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. But where on where are you talking about? Me, the medium on Porter Avenue, at the foot of Bayview. At the foot of Bayview, okay. Right. They dropped two of them there. They dropped one on the pass road. So. I mean, it's sort of just stuff that you need to. And on the Circle Park, we got the, all the approval from the tenants, people getting the money today. That's a great thing. We have a pole that's just in the middle of the, the ball field, like the empty area. And all we need to do is get that pole moved to the end so you can open up that field for kids to play soccer, 
softball, baseball, whatever you want to play in there. So I don't know. If, I think that's not a power line, but I think it's just something that could be moved probably toward the world. We just need to do it. You know, I mean, we don't have to have a study, a comprehensive study. We need to fix the thing, move the pole, so the kids can play on the ball field that we're creating. Period. Yeah. <clears throat> and another thing to make sure you pay attention to that now. You already over two. Yeah, but <laughs> you said two. Now, which is the third one? <laughs> the third one. What's that? You, you already said two things. You were left. You had the two. third one's coming. The third one. The third one, we need to create, uh, if y'all remember the antibugs, what are the analytic bugs? People pick up the trash, put it in the B News anti litter. You need to clean the city up. And they used to have one they used to call the anti litter bug. So there's something I'm that. I'm in agreement. We need to clean the city. That's no, right. no question. So I'm glad. So you agree with one of them? I'm proud of you, Povo. All right, that's it. <laughs> Down there. All right. Okay. Thank you, George. Uh, just a couple of things. I'd like to thank uh, everybody who voted last Tuesday. And looking at the numbers, overall, citywide, less than 6% of the registered voters voted citywide. Ward, uh, Ward 1, I think, was... 15% of the registered voters, Ward 1 or Ward 2, and, and the other ward was about 11 or 12%. So just, you know, we, we want folks to get out and vote, and who do you want to represent you? And uh, so I, it's just an anemic number, and four more years go by, and we'll be voting again. Maybe we can get it up to 60%, maybe. We'll work at it. Second thing is, just an observation, I'd like to thank the, the folks in Public Works and Parks and Recreation. They're out there hustling in the heat, trying to catch up after all this intermittent rain. And uh, the thing is, when, when it rains, you can't get equipment in there. These mowers, they bog down. Um, so you have to let the ground dry out a little bit, and that takes a while, so everybody's screaming about grass growing, and I, I just know that Public Works and Parks and Recreation hustle to get things done, so appreciate that. Okay, uh, that's all we have. We'll, we'll move to the public agenda. There are two public hearings. If the clerk would read the first one, please, item 3A. Public hearing to receive comments concerning an ordinance to designate 646 Water Street a Biloxi landmark. Thank you. Um, here's how we'll do the public hearings. We'll open each public hearing. There will be uh, a general presentation by Mr. Raymond. Then we'll have uh, up to five minutes if anybody wants to speak in favor of this particular item. Five minutes to up to five minutes to speak in opposition to the historical designation, and then up to five minutes for a rebuttal. And then we'll close that hearing and move to the next hearing. So that. That uh, having been said, Mr. Raymond, can you give us just a blurb on that uh, 646 Water Street? 646 Water Street it was built between um, 1903 and 1904. It's a side hall Victorian, um, and it is already considered a contributing structure in our East Central Historic District and in the National Register East Howard Avenue um, Historic District. They've done a great job, and it really is one of the last um, contributing structures left since Katrina in the East um, in the East Central Historic District. Okay. Um, is there anybody to speak in favor of this historic designation? Anybody? Anybody speaking in opposition to this historic designation? Last call. Any closing comments, uh, Mr. Ram? Okay, good job on that first public hearing. This concludes <laughs> the first hearing. You did, did such a good job. The clerk will read the next public hearing. We'll let you do it again. Public Thank hearing you. to receive comments concerning an ordinance to designate 560 Howard Avenue a Biloxi landmark. Okay. okay. And, and I think most people are going to be familiar with 560 Howard Avenue. It's the corner of Lee, the northwest corner of Lee Street and Howard. It is a two-story um, Queen Anne that was built around 1900 and has been an eyesore for many years on that street. Luckily, it's, it's changed hands three times over the last 
four years, but the new owners bought it, did a major renovation to and restoration, and now is an asset to the neighborhood. So it is considered a contributing structure in that East Howard National Register District. So the commission thought it um, was worthy and recommended that it be approved for landmark. Thank you, Mr. Rain. Is there anybody who wishes to speak in favor of the historic designation at 560 Howard Avenue? Anyone? <laughs> then, Mr. Raymond, we have we have a brave soul. If you'll step aside, Miss Hathaway, come up, come up, come on up. But it, just state your name for the record. State your oh, okay. name so the clerk gets it down. Everybody's getting a le lesson in civics today. Oh, okay. My name is Susie Hathaway, and I You're love coming. old buildings, historical buildings. My house is a historical building, so I approve of it. Okay. Do you <laughs> is that good enough? <laughs> Excellent job, Miss Hathaway. Okay. Is that all I'm supposed to say? Unless you want to speak in opposition. No. Okay. No, I'm, I'm for it. I'm okay. All right. Anybody else speaking in favor of this historic designation on Howard Avenue? Anyone speaking in opposition? No one in opposition. That concludes this hearing. We'll move next to citizens' comments. We'll allot up to 45 minutes, three minutes, up to three minutes per speaker. Please, if you're speaking, please, when you come to the table, get close to the microphone, sign in with your name and address, and state your name so the clerk can get your name on the record clearly. That being said, is there anybody on my left, your right, that wishes to speak? Mr. Hengen, please. Okay, I'm Wayne Hingen. I'm a Biloxi lawyer. My offices are at 979 Howard Avenue. I'm here representing Le Cafe Beignet. Uh, it is the city's uh, second floor tenant at the old Biloxi library, as y'all know. Uh, since October 1, 2020, Jamaican Jerk has been the first floor tenant. Uh, on your agenda at PP, I believe it's PP, mm -hmm. uh, that, under the consent agenda, is a resolution regarding an amended lease for Jamaican Jerk, and we are requesting that be tabled. Um, there are several problems with both of these leases. I've, I've looked at them, but only for a short period of time. I find that there are uh, more than just problems, but probably some inequities, and they need to be uh, fixed in favor of both of these tenants. I do not represent Jamaican Jerk, though. Um, now, I've been working with Cedar LeCap, she's the owner-operator of this cafe, to put together some issues uh, and try to come up with some uh, proposals that we could submit for resolution. So that's the reason I need some more time, and I think it would be beneficial to the city and both of these tenants if we had that time. Now, I tried to get out a collection of issues that I had been working on with CETA, um, I don't know if they all got out, but if they did, uh, there's an error on the bottom of the first page. So disregard what I sent. I have caught that error this morning. It's regarding the amount of monthly rent. I'm going to hand out uh, some new ones for y'all and for the clerk and for the mayor. If you have any questions, be glad to answer them. I will have to, to leave. I've got some conflicts that I've got to take care of back at the office. Thank you, Mr. Hendren. Is there anybody else on my left, your right? Oh, oh you're gonna go, oh, you're gonna go. Oh, I had already done that, yes. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. You got an extra one I can put for Councilman Barrett? Oh, you had it, okay. 
Thank you. Uh, you can start if you want. Oh, okay. Hello. My name is Susie Hathaway, and I reside at 150 St. George Avenue. I am here to address a painted fence at 168 St. George Avenue. I have been advised there is no code violation here, but I would like the City and Planning Commission to consider preserving and enhancing the homes and property of this neighborhood. I would like to request including this area as historical as it has three houses with the historical status, including Van Hook Hall. The school Lopez, which was recently revitalized, has added a positive impact to our neighborhood and should also be included historical since it is over 60 years old. I propose the City and Planning Commission to reconsider the appearance that this fence has on our humble community and adjoining neighborhoods and place new guidelines and regulations. My goal is to protect and preserve our beautiful neighborhood that is right off our tourist-filled beaches and lined with ancient oaks and quaint historical structures. Also, more importantly, I am concerned that this will affect our property value and would like to keep it in its original character. I am including documentation to be spread up on the minutes for your convenience to help me make our community flourish and become a better place to live. Thank you, and thank you, George Lawrence, for helping me with this. Thank you, Ms. Hathaway. Good afternoon, I'm Katherine Alexander. I am Susie's neighbor. I live at 151 St. George Avenue. I'm a new owner in Biloxi. Uh, we've been coming here on vacation for years and fell in love with the city. We chose this street because of the charming and historic homes and the numerous big oaks. Um, the city of Biloxi is doing a great job of preserving the character of the city, uh, the old time atmosphere, while growing for the future. We were considering adding a garage to our property and I consulted with the community development office. Uh, they were very helpful, very polite, very professional, and I appreciate that they do maintain the standards of the city. And we were told that as long as it did not conflict with the general atmosphere of the neighborhood, uh, the example given was, well, if you build a Chinese pagoda, that probably wouldn't you know, really fit in the neighborhood. Uh, it wouldn't be appropriate. And I understand that. I would hope that if we do build a garage, it would match the character and uh, structure of our home. The circus colored striped fence detracts from the charm of our neighborhood. It's not appropriate. If this was a cross for your, your home, would you be okay with it? My request is that the city uh, review the fence ordinance and adjust it and update it to require that fences be a single solid color, neutral in color, whether it's brown, tan, white, green, gray, in keeping with, uh, consistent with others in the neighborhood. I would also like to suggest, if possible, that it be retroactive to January 1st of this year. So um, I humbly request that the council and our uh, administrators review this. Um, you do have the responsibility and the power to guide the development of Biloxi in a positive manner and prevent neighborhood conditions that will reduce our property values. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Alexander. Is there anybody else on my left, your right, that would like to address the council? Yes, sir. Good evening, good afternoon. My name is Tony Wallace. I've uh, been in front of you guys uh, a few times, uh, Mayor, City Council, and Director Bell, who uh, just left. Uh, I'm here today to try to get to the bottom of why I have been personally uh, uh, pointed out in the utilization of the Donald Snyder gym that I use since the early 2000s at 6 a.m. with kids that's from the community 
Uh, it's an outreach program that I uh, started from, from uh, uh, the affiliation with uh, First Missionary Baptist Church in Gulfport, uh, SV uh, uh, Adolph, in that uh, youth basketball program, and it just carried on to my own personal thing where I give back. You got youth that, uh, that clearly needs male figures, but uh, for some reason I've run into an issue with uh, the gym monitor there, Melvin Bethay, who has taken a personal agenda out on me to lie to Sherry Bell, who upholds it, uh, Jamie Lee, who said that if they, uh, who's the uh, assistant superintendent, who informed the staff that if they see me teaching the kid how to dribble a ball, that I am to be accused of being charging kids with no facts, no witnesses, no receipts of anything, just so they can get me out of the gym, or stop me from utilizing the gym. And these are kids, the parents come up there and sit in the bleachers, and for some reason I cannot get a resolution to this issue. But it, it reminds me of when I was taking care of my great-grandparents, who was born in 1905, and my, grand, my great-grandfather in 1908. I took care of my great-grandfather until he passed. So that's 1905, and the stories that he would tell to me. And basically what I'm saying is, I walked past this in his hallway, and I see people that was mayors or whatever it represents in 19, I mean, in the late 1800s. And I feel like I'm being ignored. And I think about <clears throat> all the blacks that have probably been before city council that have been ignored. No, there's nothing that represents me up there. So then I come before here, and I just got an easy request, just can you resolve this issue and stop it? I get no answer. I'm being ignored. So when I look at that wall, again, I'm being ignored. I come this fourth time. I'm not. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a problem. They don't have any record of me being a problem at that gym. But I can't get anybody to say, "Hey, man, stop this lie." These people are accusing me of receiving payment, and I have not received payment. Sherry Bell was in here. She saw me, and she left. Mr. Wallace, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Uh, yeah. it, Mr. Wallace, have you spoken with Mr. Leonard or the mayor about this? Yes. We, okay. we have. I mean, we had a uh, conversation with Ian, I think his nephew, and, and some of the things that he's expressing. And I do apologize for not really uh, making some things happen, but you know, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. We will do everything we can to make sure everybody's treated fairly and, and understand that uh, what the issues are in everyone's mind. So we'll, we'll, we will do that. If these rules apply inside the gym, they apply at the outside facilities. Okay. The softball, the golf course, the outside basketball court, the softball field, not just in there. And it's, it, but it's in there because it's personal with me. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Anybody else on my left, your right, wish to address the council? Anybody on my right, your left? Anybody on the left side of the room? Anybody in the back? Nobody. Okay, that concludes citizens' comments. We'll move to the policy agenda. If the clerk uh, would read the first item, please. Ordinance amending Chapter 20 regarding definition of low-speed vehicles. Okay, this was... Uh, this was moved by Mr. Lawrence and seconded by Mr. Gines. This is item, if you're following along, it's item 4A. Mr. Lawrence. Basically what we did here, Peter, we just had gasoline vehicles to the electric vehicles. Can't hear that? Correct. So we added the gasoline along with the electrical vehicles for the golf course. Right, that's the only change that's being made. <clears throat> and the other thing, everybody in the brothers calling when they can start using the things. I know you and I had a conversation. Is there a way you could put anything out to let the people know it should start in July? They have to go through the police department, make an appointment. That seemed to be the problem. They have no clue what hey. to do. Is it on the website yet? 
Say that again. I'm asking. Everybody don't have a website. I'm there is a page on the website. It was in the June issue of B News Monthly to contact the police department, and it's going to be in the July issue with more details, even regarding the registration and information that people need to have their golf cart registered. Well, that's a good start, too. We put it on TV. You know, everybody don't have a website. They don't all do that. But, I mean, you know, if you're getting to some of the people, not all the people. Well, since we need to cover the best ground we can, you know. Actually, if you want Brian Dax to come up and talk, he is the one who oversees it in the police right, department. Hey, hey all right. Yeah, come on. Hey, come, come on, Brian. On. All right. You mean, you mean that poor? You mean He's that actually been interviewed a couple is, times by the media as well regarding the event. You mean that poor soul is present at this meeting? Uh, Captain Dykes. What can I answer for you particularly, sir? <laughs> uh, when? Uh, we need you to find out to get it to as many people that's interested in doing this. I know there's a few things we still got to critique. We have to check some of the stuff, what we can do with our shield, some of these roads they can use. But the we biggest problem the is they're trying to figure out when they can start and when they, what they have to do to get their vehicle approved. Yes, sir. We've done, uh, as Cecilia said, the website. We've done a blast stop also in through the public media xxv lox and all the rest of the news stations we've already had a citizen sign up for uh an inspection to be conducted which has been scheduled for i believe for later this week or next week for that inspection to be conducted we've also done a point paper which is a, a very very small outline that lets people know exactly what's going to be needed when they call where to call and how to go about setting up that appointment. So we've done all the things to begin the program rolling as it was designed. Uh, I mean, so we just need to stay with you and keep an update, let the people know as soon as we can. Uh, so, so is it supposed to go into effect July the 1st? Yes, uh, no, sir. It's in effect now? Correct. It's in effect now, okay. Yeah, so we've already scheduled the first appointment for the, uh, for the vehicle inspection. Uh, Mr. Abide's office already sent out uh, maps showing the rest of the city. Those came from your office, is that correct, sir? Uh, maps, we, we initially only had maps for the east end of, end of town. We've uh, now put out maps for the entirety of the city, showing where they're allowed and where they're not. Is there an, in there an email address if you're asking for a, an inspection? Yes, sir, and that went out also on the, the local media and through the city website. It's lsvregistration at biloxi.ms.us, uh, low-speed vehicle registration, LSV registration. And uh, they go on to the site there, uh, ask for an appointment, an appointment's emailed back to them and told, tells them where and when to be. Uh, if they need to be somewhere in particular, or uh, we can go to them. And uh, we conduct the inspection at that point. They come to the police department and pick up their decal. Any particular road that they cannot drive on? That's correct, sir. They're given a packet when they do their registration that includes both the point paper, just to reiterate the rules, and uh, a, a packet of the maps, both East End Biloxi and the entirety of the city. And I believe one of the inspections this week didn't have the lighting, and we advised them of that, and and that that person is now coming into compliance. So That's the, correct. So the inspection process is working. That's correct, sir. Uh, that the point paper uh, again is is making it a little easier for people to read and wade through exactly what's needed for their inspection. Is Irish Hill one of the roads they can use? Irish Hill. Not right now. No, so the, speed, have to the speed limit is greater than 25 on Irish Hill. So we'd have to lower the speed limit to 25. <laughs> In some areas, I expect there'll be some some requests to reduce speed in some areas, but I don't think I don't think we're prepared to lower the speed on all all of Irish Hill at this point. Because the speed limit inside the city used to be 25. Majority of the speed limits inside the city of Biloxi was 25 or 15. So it's just something we need to look at because a lot of those people up that way want to be able to use them, and all they could use it is to lower the speed limit to 25. It's just something we have to maybe y'all can make a study on that, look at that, and see if that's feasible. We'll certainly get with Mr. Abide and the mayor's office and, and figure out where and if that can be done. 
All right. I think in the first couple of months you're going to have some. You'll get you'll get some requests, and you'll request from us. Is my prediction. Well, that's probably so. And I mean, there's so many things you probably have to look at, and some you you, you won't change. But you know, that's, that's what you need to do right now with something new. You know, critique the law, the, the bill we passed tonight. So that's, that's all in place now. So that's a good thing. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anything else, Mr. Lawrence? No, that's it. Mr. Gaines? He jumped up mighty quick. <laughs> <laughs> I have no other, no further questions. <laughs> Is there any other discussion? No other discussions. Any other council? I, I have some comments. I'm opposed to gasoline engines, and I'll explain why. First of all, the noise that's involved with these engines. The second thing is I have concerns about, and I know the police department will do a good job with this, but I'm thinking right now there are people out there with ATV saying, I can't wait to get me a decal. And uh, you have these, I guess, depending on what you call them, utility vehicles, mules, side-by-sides. A lot of those are gas-powered. A lot of those uh, don't have governed speeds. And uh, I, I helped draw up the original ordinance. And, and uh, although the state provides for gasoline-powered engines, uh, I stuck with electric only because of the noise and because of all the gas fumes and all that other stuff. Yeah. The uh, other thing is I'm glad that we have the, I'll get to you. I know that we, uh, I'm glad to hear that we've got the, the map out there and uh, I'll get with Captain Dykes to put something on my website. But I don't, I don't believe with all due respect to my colleagues up here, I don't believe the intent was once we approve this ordinance, it'll be possible to drive from the point out to the mall and maybe out to the Sunkiss Golf Course and possibly to visit your cousin out in Wool Market. I don't believe that was ever the intent. I think the intent was to get around in your neighborhood or in downtown Biloxi. So uh, it, it, if this is approved today, I hope it is, and I suspect it will be. Um, then I think we need to be sure that these gasoline engines have mufflers or whatever um, and that we don't rush to judgment on lowering the speed limit. Everybody's going to love these golf cars till you get behind them when you're going from point A to point B. It's one of the issues in our, neighbor, in our sister cities here that people tell you about. And uh, maybe one day that that person slowing to pray, it'll be me. I'll have my hat on. I'll be doing 12 miles an hour on my golf cart, maybe. <laughs> Learn to love me at that age. Anyway, that, that, those are my comments. I, I trust they're well-founded, and I don't know how persuasive they'll be, but Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, I'd like to just uh, express my opinion about the, the uh, gasoline, especially when it comes to golf cart technology and hybrid technology. It's in a golf cart, and if you've been to some of the places that have gasoline-powered golf carts, the noise is not a problem. And, of course, it's low speed. So that's where we would, uh, I'd like to express my, I, I agree 100%, you don't want to hear a lot of noise, and it's going to be gracefully quiet, and that's what we want. And, and it, the specific, you know, specifically, I've seen some pretty good, uh, gasoline powered golf carts, not so much empty, uh, you know, the all-terrain vehicles and so forth. I just want to share that with you. So we <laughs> Thank you, I'm touched. Thank you. Thank you. Any other Let comments? Say, yeah, one, one Mr. comment. Mr. Lawrence. You, you two had y'all shot. Okay, maybe we we'll to increase the speed of the golf course to 30 miles an hour, save everybody a lot of trouble. But the thing is that when you let them people rent them little things running around on Highway 90, are you kidding me? And you worry about a golf course, you can't even see them things. The good thing they got a flag on them. They're not bigger than a bite. And they run up and on Highway 90. We're not going to allow golf course on Highway 90. So no, you got to pay attention. How that got approved, I really have no clue. Them little, Sorry. they look like little bullets. Two people sitting them. I mean, you can't even see them. My Mercury's going to slap over them. I mean, that's, you know, you're talking about Highway 90 and golf course? Come on, you're in two different worlds there, Paul. I, I won't argue oh, the no, I no, won't no. argue the point no, with you. I won't argue the point with you because I feel the same way. Right. I, I'm sure you have, and I checked with uh, 
Chief Miller when those vehicles Somebody first hit the road. I guess I know Peter and the mayor, I don't know. And uh, did his, they're legal. So yeah. I don't know how. Yeah, I, I don't understand either. the fine points. <laughs> and you won't catch me in one, but I understand. All right, we'll call for the question. All in favor? All opposed? All right, thank you. That's a 5 1 vote carry. We'll move to. Who was against it? Item B. Who was against it? Uh, I didn't get Paul that. Tisdale. Paul Tisdale was against it. <laughs> That's P A U L. <laughs> All right, we'll go to the next item. Item, excuse me. Yeah. Ordinance item B. Ordinance to designate additional buildings as Biloxi landmarks. Uh, the motion was made by Mr. Lawrence, and there was a, the second was by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Lawrence? I think better way to say no about all that. So okay. I'm all for it. Mr. Glavin, anything? I uh, convey the same thoughts as uh, Mr. Lawrence. Sounds like a good deal. Any other discussion? All in favor? None opposed. That's unanimous. That brings us to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Mr. I'll Lawrence. Second. I'll second it. And Mr. Gaines with a second. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Lawrence. Questions about any items, Mr. Lawrence? Down uh, golf, Mr. Leonard. We're moving money around in here for what? Inside the court system. Which item? Which item? Golf, G. I'm he using a golf. chart now. Golf. Five G. G. Yeah. What? I, I don't understand. What's the issue? What's the question? What, what are we doing? You said you. Why are we buying computers for the car department? From, we transfer from where? Trying to budget when we transfer. Uh, what's the debit budget? Thank you. That's what we're is, 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 is your question on how are we going to pay for this? Yeah, it's in the, the answer, it's in the budget. It's in the budget. Yeah, so, I, this was a request from municipal court. They wanted four computers. They had an adequate amount of funds in their machinery and equipment uh, department. And so we're transferring from machinery equipment to small equipment. Does not impact the budget. Yeah, I believe it did, but I mean, uh, we're just not accomplishing a whole lot with the court system. We're losing a lot of money. No, we can't no. seem to be. We can't seem to be uh, collect enough money. The biggest problem we just don't seem to collect it like we used to. No, Everything else is the same. We're just not collecting the money, and bringing it in. There's a problem. But the two different things. This is a, this is a use of small equipment versus you know it's a transfer debit one credit the other. No impact to the bottom line of budget. I know what I'm just. Okay, but yeah, your your question as far as revenue in the courts and the ability to find people, the ability to put people in jail. It's a separate question. It's a big question. It's an important question. But uh, uh, that's where you know the revenue, when it used to be a million or two million dollars in fines collected, now it's you know it's a half a million to three hundred thousand, I think. So two different questions. I hope we only answered the first question. Yeah, you know, the question was, are we spending money inside the budget? Maybe we ought not be spending, right? Yes. That's all I'm saying. Because we're not creating enough revenue. So the more money we spend, it's just another expense. That's all I was saying. And what are we transferring with the Mardi Gras Museum? The H Hotel. I think this was property that they owned that we were still holding for them from the Magnolia Hotel. Yeah, Magnolia Hotel. Say again. It's it's property that was in the marine that was in the museum at the Magnolia Hotel when we moved into the the new facility. The property moved over there, but it was still on our books. We just need to get it off our books. It's minor items. If Bill Raymond was still here, he yes. could line item for you. I mean, I don't know everything that's on the list. I'm the one that made the list, but I should know whatever's on. Most of it's mannequins. 
There was a computer that we used for the museum, the cash register for the gift shop. It's stuff like that that was on the our inventory over at the and when it was at Magnolia Hotel. But when you transfer the operation over to the museum board, all of that equipment went over there, but it was still on our books. So we're trying to clean up our books and put it over there with the museum like it belongs, because that's where it is. All right. Yes, okay. Thank you. thank you, Bill. And we got here T. Like in tango, as Mike would say. Okay, I, I can read it. It says we're going to extend key impact strategies for another 90 days till the end of the fiscal year. I'm just wondering if he's going after some money for our bridges. Mm -hmm. Can he do stuff like that, or what, what, what do we do with him? That's the purpose. Again, is to chase the, and we've already expressed with Keith, and we're going to uh, Washington uh, with him again in order to you know, ex you know, talk about our priorities if there's an opportunity for infrastructure improvement. And uh, as well as what's happening in the state, uh, but also DC. And we'll, we're having a, a trip the rest of the week. Uh, you know, and he's certainly been impactful, not only with what he's already done, but where we uh, will be you know, asking for consideration. Uh, should the infrastructure money become available and uh, you know directly and indirectly to to Biloxi and, and what I want bottom line is we need these services yeah, and, and if you know if you don't think you, you know you can do it you can't do it alone you have to have that presence and I think that's why we su totally support this uh, this item well may you give uh, each councilman an update some of the stuff that y'all got going on with him and everything we will all right And uh, the JJ, uh, I think Peter will be happy about this one. JJ. Okay. This is about the Attorney General of the State of Mississippi, a pit, or in nine minutes, for the Harrison County, in a local agreement. Yeah, we're, we're just spreading it on the minutes. I think when we passed it uh, earlier, when we got it back from the Attorney General, they just directed us to put it on our minutes, and we were just looking at our compliance, and we had never officially spread it on the minutes. So that's what we're doing now. But now it's official. And on uh, the next one, uh, LL, the $800,000 uh, for Coon Street is strictly for parking and lighting. We are in grant season now. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> like Christmas. <laughs> we have Tidelands grants, Go Mesa grants, Brick grants, Ray's grants, Historical Properties grants, and Gulf Coast Restoration Fund. They'll just name a few. Yeah. This is one, one example of the grants that we're going to be asking for that we come to council and always ask permission before we ask. So you're asking for LL. That was the Coon Street boat ramp. We're asking for the rest of the money that we didn't get last year. That project started out about 1.5 million. They gave us some money last year to get started. This is the, we're asking for the residual. Is this anything to do with uh, expanding the ramps? Or is this just strictly parking and lighting? What we made a choice when we only got a third of the money last year that we would start by, by doing the boat ramps and we would do the parking later once we got the rest of the money. This is the rest of the money we're asking for. Now, we won't see this money for months and months and months. This is just the first step in asking for the money. Right. Lee Street boat ramp, sediment removal, right. cane and fishing dock, just, just that's a short list. It, Tidelands, this is just the Tidelands asks. And on the RR, what are we doing? This uh, lease at the Lighthouse Park. Is that's that one, the one that's with the snowball vendors. stand and trucks, a little bit of everything? I didn't, I didn't hear the question. You said RR. RR. It says trucks. I mean, which, what are we going to put there? I yeah, if you look at the, the snowball stand, was that one of them? That, that would be, they would be a bit, they would have the opportunity. It's, it's somewhat first come, first serve. We have six locations. 
that are available in the Lighthouse Park. They're on the grass. They would be facing away from the parking lot as far as customers. And uh, we have the terms, uh, six month term, payable of the full six month term at 150 a month per spot. Is this the, the Lighthouse Park you're talking about on Portland Highway, Highway 90? Right, where the pavilion is, uh, to the east, to the west of the visitor center. Right. All right. Thank you. Mr. Gaines? Yeah, you know, George just about covered most of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I, just, bet, I bet he missed one. Uh, yeah, he missed one. He missed one. I wanted to go ahead and um, um, Mr. Hingen, uh Attorney Hingen asked that uh, we give him time with his client, and I think we should respect that. So I'm going to move that we table PP uh, subject to call. Second. We got a motion by Mr. Uh, Gines. We got a second by Mr. Glavin. Any discussion? All in favor? Six zero vote carry. Thank you. Continue, Mr. Gines. Okay, that concludes my report. Excellent, Miss Newman. Anything, Mr. Deming? Nothing, Mr. Glavin. Only thing I want to ask is uh, on on the item of, on the dredging that we were requesting. Uh, what are we requesting? Three hundred thousand, or, or or what was it in the Tideman funds? I I can't remember the number, but it's if I look. I at think the, it was three hundred thousand, but whatever the amount was. Uh, I'm looking at the schedule of of. Areas and it says brought us by you, Linda, by you, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't, I don't see any in Ward Six. Uh, is that an oversight or? The, the, that's the list of uh, sites that we have that are waiting for permitting right now. Okay. So how about the ones in Ward Six? Where where are they in this process, or are they being left out, or? Because they were on the radar for a good good amount of time, and we got one, one small little canal on North Haven. Which one? If you if you'll tell me which bayou or Brazier Bayou, Brazier Bayou. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll check. Right, I don't remember what number it was. Ultimately, we we get money, we get a lump sum of money, and we spend it against whatever gets permitted. There, I mean, there are some. These were permitted. Some, These some were sites really that uh, that we had money for last year, but they weren't permitted, so we didn't do them. There were other sites that weren't on our list, but were permitted that we did. Mm -hmm. So we're just kind of working against. And in our in our ten year master plan, you know, we're, the real plan, the real objective of that is to is to know ten years out where, where we're going to get to. So the mass, and when Seymour comes to talk to you about SAVs, I'll ask him to brief you on the on the master plan. Okay, I I just want to point out these these ones that I was talking about over mm -hmm. in Ward Six and and Ward Four mm -hmm. were duly permitted. I mean, we got the permits. It was just moving toward getting the permission to actually commence with the dredging. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just don't want those to kind of get shelved or, or put on the back burner and and never to be seen again. Mm -hmm. So. With all due respect. Okay. Yep. Mr. Glavin, excuse me, Mr. Demon, sorry. Mike, um, just to piggyback off of what Glavin was saying, there were some areas in Ford that aren't on this also that this was back when uh, Ms. Labata was the director and organizing this, and numerous times she talked about putting them on the list. You know, the Patricia Place and the, and the Thornhill area, there's a lot of areas that need to be dredged that, that uh, Seymour didn't. Um, state had the SAV problem and we did not not get permit for those reasons, that those were money issues. And so mm -hmm. if I could get an updated list from you to show us which ones are actually barred by the SAVs, the sub submerged aquatic vegetation issue and which ones were, were funding issues, because it would I think it would behoove us to attempt to get the ones that were funding issues done while we wait for the approval for the SAVs. But we have a lot of them, like Mr. Glavin was talking about, that we discussed with the department and were told they were put on the list. And I have constant emails in contact with, with uh, residents asking what the update is. And, and I you know, can only give them as much information as I'm given. 
So if I could get that from you, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Anything else? No. Um, on item RR related question, not specific to RR, but um, clear as muddy, clear as muddy. R so that's the pirate. That's the pirate one. Yeah. Yeah, the pirate item RR. <laughs> I'm armed. I'm armed. <laughs> so here, here's my question. Since, since we're looking at uh, leasing spots there at Lighthouse Park, uh, when you get to where the old Garn Flows was, south of Highway 90, in front of Golden Nugget, where the, that, that green space in there, now we've got that nice walkway along the water's edge. Possibly, are there some spaces out there that we might lease? Somebody give that man a microphone. Thank you. You know we've got some partners down there in that old spot. We have some actual issues. You don't have to tell them. But you know, there's certainly a possibility down there. And if you look at what where the footprint of where Gorn flows were over the water, without tidelands leases and so forth. So that's on the radar. And I'm happy to discuss what we're thinking about there. You know, and the ability to you know, uh, go forward with something there with not a lot of permission from anyone. But certainly those are opportunities that we need to, you know, uh, present you know, to the public. Now, just I'm thinking there may be a great opportunity there. Sure. So, Mr. Lawrence? Yes. Just checking. One last time. Anything? You good? All right. Well, vote on the uh, Go ahead, Mr. Denning. I'm sorry to bring this back up, but I don't want... Um, this opportunity to be missed. When I look at the, the Thailand's grant application with the listed areas, would it be beneficial to add those other areas that we were talking about, just this application, before we submit it? So if we were to be able to do them, we'd be able to do them. I don't want this monies, the monies with, associated with this grant to be restricted to those areas if we have other areas that could be dredged as well. Yeah, no problem adding the list. Um, understand we're asking for a bucket of money, not not so much for this bayou and so much for this bayou and so much for this bayou. Well, I get that, but and we're, and we're listing and we're listing the bayous that uh, or estuaries that we want that we're hoping to be able to uh, have permitted to spend. I mean, what could come out of this is that the the uh, we could have, we could have money from Thailand's and no, nowhere to dredge. Uh, well, that, that is exactly why I think we should list mm -hmm. the other ones on there, because if we can't dredge those, mm -hmm. we should still have the opportunity to spend the money in other areas. Um, I, I think that maybe putting too many down is not a bad thing. I think it's yeah. better to have more listed to get it done than have not enough listed if the DMR is going to restrict us to the areas that are listed on this application. Mayor, if you, if you don't mind, I'd, I'd be more than happy we, to, to drop this one and put it back on next next meeting just with a more complete list. list, or the list or whatever. So yep. It just be, goes along with we actually submit the application. I don't, I mean, there's no downside to including those on this list that we send up. I don't know from a, you know, a, a, an ordinance standpoint, do we have to add this, those or a number, maybe five or six more to it? Well, I think that's, I think that's the list where I'm trying to say pass this as it is, and I'll certainly, we'll certainly mm -hmm. add, you know, more mm -hmm. to it, I guess. Well, I think the, that's the question, is will the DMR, is the DMR going to be restrictive? Will they restrict us to spending the money on only these listed areas? I don't think so, but, but I can't be certain. Well, you know, we can, if you want to wait a week, we can add, you know, another 20 to the list. I'll check on that. As long as the list goes with them, along with our application. So let's, should we, I move, should we make a motion to table this till the next meeting? All right, so th this is, uh, yeah, is not, it item double N? I think it's M. Yeah. Single it M? M? No, it's MM. Is it MM? No, that's, no, that's the boat, Street. That's the boat ramp. It's going to be item NN, removing sediment from waterways. That's the one we're speaking of, right? Yeah, that is. So Robert, and then. you want to make a motion, Robert? I'll I, second I, it. I made a motion to table I'll second it. All right, so there's a motion by Mr. Deming, a second by Mr. Glavin. 
to table item in in how long do we want to table that for the next meeting we have enough time. table it for a week in order to amend it to include additional canals or waterways whatever um any other discussion all in favor six of vote carry all right let's see all right i think that's covered everything here are there let we'll we'll vote on the consent agenda and then we'll come back to see if if there are any folks who are opposed to any particular items. All in favor of the consent agenda to 6 -0 vote. Mr. Lawrence, any uh, items you're opposed to? None. Mr. Gaines, Ms. Dem, uh, Ms. Wow. Dem wow. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Newman, I mean, Mr. Deming, okay. Mr. Gravin. None. I, I apologize. <laughs> As usual, All right, good. We can finally move on to the next item. That brings us to code enforcement. Mr. Creel, thank you. Item A on the agenda, Othelia Cavazos. This is 142 Keller Avenue. This is the uh, old Bart building and I'd like to ask for an additional 30 days. Uh, Mr. Cuevas has finally closed the sale on the property and the contractor was coming in this afternoon to pull the permit to restore the building. I'll move third. So, so there's a motion by Mr. Lawrence and a second by Mr. Gaines to extend this for 30 days. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right, that closes that hearing. We'll move to the next hearing. Item B, Savannah Thomas, care of Marla Hanford, 170 Camellia Street. I'd also like to ask for an additional 30 days on this. They have cleaned up a large part of the property, but there's some things in there they just don't have the means to do. And I'm gonna to talk to Back Bay Mission about helping to get the rest of it out. I recommend the 30 days. Motion by Mr. Lawrence, second by Mr. Gaines. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Opposed, none. Thank you, Mr. Creel. That brings us to the routine agenda. So moved. There's a motion by Mr. Lawrence and a second by Mr. Gaines. Mr. Lawrence, um, go ahead, Mr. Lawrence. Who's got the envelope of money this week? Walt, no. you awake back there, Walt? Why are y'all not dressed up? We've been on vacation. Still working. So right now we have 1.96 million in step three of five, put in a request to MEMA to bump it to uh, the next step, step four or five. <clears throat> Once it gets into step four or five, it usually takes 10, 15 business days to get here. So we're staying above, above the water. All right, appreciate that. Thank yes, sir. Any other questions in the consent agenda? If not, I'll call for the question. All in favor? It's a 6-0 vote. All opposed? None, thank you. That brings us, uh, is there a motion to recess? I'll close it. A motion by Mr. Deming. I second it. Second by Mr. Lawrence, all in favor? 6-0, thank you, we are in recess.